All right, let's look at another example here of an SSA problem. We have another side, side, and angle, where we have an angle across from a side, and then an additional side. So in our tests, we used alpha and A for the angle and side, and B for the additional side. But if you notice in this problem, B and beta are the ones that are across from each other, and C is the additional one. So instead of dealing with A being less than, equal, or greater to B, we're going to use B and C. So the first test to do is to see if B is less than C, which it is, because 6 is less than 8. So that means it is one of the three possibilities rather than the one triangle option. Okay. The next thing to look at is to test the... Um, to see if 6 is less than, greater than, or equal to 8 sine 35. So we put 8 sine 35 in our calculator, we get 4.6, and 6 is greater than 4.6. That tells us that this is the two triangle situation because 6 is longer than the needed 4.6 to make a right triangle and therefore must move to one side or the other in order to complete that triangle. Okay, so I'm trying to draw a picture and it didn't work out, so I'm going to use this little piece of paper to draw my picture instead. See if I can do better this time. So I need um, this to be alpha, actually beta, huh? Because we're doing beta instead. Beta, and then these are both length B, and then this is length C. So if these are B, they're across from beta, C is across from gamma. So there's one possible gamma, and the other possible gamma is here, okay? And then here we have alpha, and so across from alpha is either length A here, or a different length A that is here. So we have a different this alpha, or this alpha, this gamma, or this gamma, and then this A, or this A. It sounds confusing, but it's not as bad as it looks. You begin by just solving this just like you would the problems on, that we have already done today, which is just using Law of Sines in the way you would have already used Law of Sines. Okay, so if you don't test it first, it's really easy to just use Law of Sines and find one of the solutions and forget that there even is a second solution. So we're going to do sine of B, or beta over B, equals sine of gamma over C. This time, it's a little bit different because when we cross multiply, we end up solving for the sine of gamma instead of for, like, C, side C. So we're going to have to use an inverse sine to solve it. So it'll be 8 sine 36, oh, it's 35, isn't it? My bad. Divided by 6, that's where I got the 6. So in order to find that, we're actually going to do the inverse sine of that stuff, right? So I, when I do that, I get 49.9 degrees for gamma. Okay. Then, once we have gamma, we can find side A. Or is that alpha? Yeah, that's alpha. Once we have gamma, we can find alpha because we can just take beta and gamma add them together and that gives us um, 84.9 and then we take 180 and subtract 84.9 and we get 95.1 so there's alpha and then once we have alpha we can find A by going sine of 95.1 over A equals sine of beta over b, so sine of 35 over 6. We cross multiply, so a is 6 sine 95.1 divided by 6, which gives us 10.4. So that is going to be one of our two triangles in this picture. It doesn't really matter which one of the triangles it is because it's going to be the same method regardless to find the other one. It just so happens that the numbers we just found are actually the big triangle 
But like I said, it's not going to matter regardless. We'll still be able to find the same answers, even if we pretend it's the small one. Okay. All right. Next thing then, now that we have the original, the first set of solutions for alpha and for alpha and gamma and side A, um, we need to use the stuff I talked about earlier, which is that these two angles add up to 180, and these two angles are congruent. Okay, so if this angle is 49.9, which obviously it's not because that one's obtuse, so that's kind of how we know that this one's 49.9, so let's do it that way instead. So we just found this one is 49.9, which means that this one is also 49.9, right? So then we can subtract that from 180 to find this angle, and that will be our other gamma. We're going to call it gamma 2. So this was the original gamma, and this is gamma the sequel. Okay, so over on our page here, we're just going to go 180, subtract that 49.9 that we got earlier, and that gives us a new answer for gamma 2, 130.1. Now that we have that answer, we don't need to worry about where they are in the picture. We just go ahead and solve it with that number, just like we solved the above set of answers with the 49.9. We're going to ignore this top set of answers that we just got, and we're going to just redo the whole solution with this new answer, this new set of answers. So to find alpha, we want to go 130.1 plus the angle we already have, 35. That adds up to 165.1. We subtract that from 180 to find the third angle of a triangle and we get 14.9 degrees. So there's the other angle. And then to find the last side, we just do sine of 35 over 6, because that stays the same, that part stays the same for both triangles, equals, but this time to find um, the second A value, we're going to call it A the second, um, we have to use alpha the second, right? So then we cross multiply and divide, so cross multiply 6 times sine of 14.9 divide by sine of 35 and we get 2.7. So there's one set of answers and the second set of answers for our two triangles.